Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first monthly recap of 2024. Of course, we are looking at January, January 2024, and I want to give you the numbers and the news that are going to affect your financial future. So let's dive in. First thing I want to look at is the S&P. So this here is a chart of the S&P 500 throughout the month of January. You can see generally it went up. And then at the end here, a couple days where it had a sharp decline. Keep that in mind because I want to talk about this throughout the video. Why did it decline like this? And generally speaking, why was it going up? Let's compare that to the Dow. And it looks almost identical, generally going up with a tiny sharp decline at the end. Why would that be? Hold that thought. The NASDAQ, very similar. These almost look like the same charts. Again, generally up with a sharp decline at the end. Okay, so let's get into some specifics here. We have an article here from Bloomberg. Slump at Texas factories mirrors weakness in other Fed surveys. Okay, so what does this mean? Basically, production at factories is down even though we're seeing the stock market go up. Okay, so how do we reconcile these? Uh, let's, let's look at something else from that same article. Regional Fed surveys show steeper manufacturing contraction. So manufacturing is the backbone of the economy. And here we have four separate data points from the Dallas Fed, New York Fed, Richmond Fed, and Kansas City Fed that are all showing a pretty significant decline in manufacturing. So a note here, readings below zero indicate contracting activity. So how many readings do we have here below zero? It's almost every single one. Look at Dallas. Every single month is below zero. This is manufacturing contracting month by month by month. And if you look at the January data point that we just got, it's the second worst in Dallas. It's the worst of the last year in New York. OK, it's the worst in Richmond and it's darn close to the worst in Kansas City. So looking at these four samples, manufacturing is contracting over and over and over. Yet the stock market is going up. This is this is a weird thing. How do we explain this? Well, if we zoom out and look for the last 30 years, leading economic indicator index versus the S&P 500. Leading economic indicators, okay, that's the red line, generally pretty tightly correlated with the S&P 500. Even during COVID, there was a pretty tight correlation. They both contracted sharply and then rebounded together. But lately, we've seen a divergence. What could explain this? Why are these separate? And how long is it going to be that way? Another tweet by the same uh, guy, Tavi Costa, the World Container Index. OK, this is basically the global freight cost index. It just got updated again in the month of January, and now it's up almost 140 percent in one month. OK, so the cost of shipping freight way higher. The only time we saw this in the past was during COVID. Could we be having a second wave just like the COVID wave? It's possible. We'll have to keep watching this month by month. But again, if it's more expensive to ship freight, why isn't this being reflected in the stock market? Hmm. Hmm. Another chart I want to look at in January is crude oil. This is WTI. And you can see that throughout the month of January, it moved from about 72 to about 76. Kind of a steady rise up, meaning it's getting more expensive to ship things. Whether it's international or domestic, it's just going to be more expensive to ship things, more expensive to get goods into the hands of consumers. Shouldn't that also be reflected in the stock market? Like more than just the last two days of the month? Well, let's look at one other thing, housing. So housing, of course, we don't have daily price data. So if we look at just the month of January, we might only get a single data point. So it's hard to see a trend in just one month. So we have to zoom out here. And here we're looking at San Francisco houses since 2002. There was, of course, the housing bubble of 2006, 7, and 8. And we are clearly in another housing bubble, at least in San Francisco. And it's much bigger. We have a 20, January 2024 update, biggest price drops from 2022 peak. 
prices were below their 2022 peaks in nine metros of the 20 metros in the Case Shiller Index. This right here is just one of them. This is San Francisco. So yeah, massive decline here. Could this be the deflating of a real estate bubble? Possibly. Uh, could it be in just one of the metro areas? Possibly. Could it be in nine of the 20 metros? Possibly. Again, this is something we're going to have to watch month by month. One other example here, uh, I picked a, a, a building here in Washington, D.C. An office building just sold at a shocking 83% discount to what it last sold for. The Xerox building in the Washington, D.C. area sold for $25 million or $83 per square foot. It last sold for $145 million in 2011. So again, this could be a rolling over of the real estate market. We'll see. We'll see. Hi, I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for subscribing and mention that if you'd like to help our channel, please consider my company, GoldSilver.com, the next time you buy precious metals. We're one of the most trusted names in the industry. Our prices are sharp, delivery is fast, and we have an insider's program where you find out exactly what I'm doing with my own investments. Thanks for making GoldSilver.com your dealer. And now, back to the video. One other thing I want to mention here is the 10-year treasury. So during the month of January, yields rose. So going down on the chart, this is inverted. So these are rising yields, which we can think of as falling prices, right? Treasury is becoming less appealing and then starting to reverse and then yields falling. So starting starting the month around 3.95%, 3 finishing just under 4%. And we see this this U-shaped pattern, especially rising here at the end, which is similar to gold. Gold had a very similar path here during the month of January. So these are kind of the two safe havens you might think of, the 10-year the treasury and gold. So gold starting above 2070, finishing just shy of 2070. So on, on balance, is pretty flat, but this U-shape here, very similar to the curve in the 10-year treasury. So what is going on here? We said that stock market, the, the stock market tends to be rising, except the last couple of days it had a sharp decline. You look at the safe haven assets, they tend to decline until the last couple of days they had a sharp increase. So they're almost doing the opposite. The risk assets going up and dropping, the safe haven assets going down and rising. And they don't seem to be connected to fundamentals. What could it be? Well, the Fed hints that rate cuts aren't coming soon. So it would seem that all these pieces of the economy are connected more to what the Federal Reserve decided to do with interest rates than they are connected to the actual fundamentals. Hmm, interesting. So stocks tumbled Wednesday after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell indicated that officials are likely won't start cutting rates at the central bank's next policy meeting in March. So we're not gonna get a meeting in February. The next one in March, they probably won't cut rates either, or at least that's what they say. And it seems like the economy is reflecting more to that than fundamentals. Interesting. So two other things I wanna look at this month, silver. Silver uh, starting about $24 an ounce, moving to just over 23. Doesn't quite have that, that increase at the end, but silver, of course, less of a safe haven than gold and more of an industrial metal. So yeah, maybe this is more accurate um, relative to fundamentals. Bitcoin, we had some news here. Bitcoin was up and down and back up again, relatively flat on balance. Uh, but the big news with Bitcoin is the approval by the SEC of Bitcoin spot ETFs. So ETFs were approved roughly, roughly at the peak of the price in January. And then once the approval uh, was announced publicly, the price of Bitcoin dropped. So really a buy the rumor, sell the fact type situation. Interesting. Uh, a couple other things on Bitcoin here. Bitcoin overtakes silver to become the second biggest commodity ETF. So the top three being gold, Bitcoin and silver. And that's just the first week. That's just the first week of Bitcoin actually trading as an ETF. Uh, so these, these are the three commodities that represent basically 100% of my portfolio. So I'm going to keep my eye on these three. Um, 
yeah, so stay tuned for next month. One other thing on Bitcoin, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but the key takeaway here is while we were sleeping, the European Commission has been creating a report which they plan to label Bitcoin as environmentally harmful, a threat to EU energy security, and a haven for financial criminals. So that is paving the way for a 2025 de facto EU ban on Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining. So for anyone who just kind of thinks in terms of rumors, yeah, they, they think that Bitcoin hurts the environment and is a threat to energy security, and they think it's for criminals. But to anyone who actually studies the details, they know that this is all wrong. And generally speaking, it's the opposite of the truth. So we can go into those more in a separate video, but it seems like the EU regulators are uh, gunning for Bitcoin. So we'll see what happens. That leads me into the meme of the week. And before I show you that, I just want to say that after the meme, I do have one other news story. So ordinarily, the meme would be last, but stick around for one news story after the meme. Here it is. On top of the fiat hill, your Ponzi scheme is killing the environment. <laughs> Seems like hypocrisy to me, but take it as you will. And the other thing I wanted to share with you before we wrap up is another tweet. Oh, look, the Federal Reserve's internal review found that fellow members did nothing wrong when they were caught insider trading. So about two and a half years ago, this was September of 2021, two Fed leaders resigned because of stock trading. And just this month, the Fed review cleared those central bank officials of violating any rules. It's a big club and you ain't in it. <laughs> so anyways, uh, that's it for this month. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there. I'll see you soon.